Okay, I'm just going to flick on to the next slide. That's all right, Rich. Okay, so I've gone, I've gone through this. I'm just going to go on to the next one. Right, a couple of times in this talk, I'm going to talk about how things are remembered. So there's a couple of plaques here, and this is the first plaque that was put up to, to remember Peterloo. And I'll, I'll explain how what Peterloo was. Peterloo was in St. Peter's Fields. This is an ironic name, because the Battle of Waterloo happened in 1815. Okay, so the ironic word for this massacre was to call it Peterloo. It's ironic, it's like saying, well, the British troops cut down the French at um, Battle of Waterloo, and they came to Manchester and cut down their own working class. Okay, that's why it's called Peterloo. Um, and this, this plaque here says, and this is on the site, originally on the site uh, of, um, of where the massacre occurs, it said, this is the site of St. Peter's Field, where on the 16th of August 1819, Henry Hunt, radical orator, addressed an assembly of about 60,000 people. Their subsequent dispersal by the military is remembered as Peterloo. Okay? Well, you can have a little think about a subsequent dispersal. Okay? This is a plaque that went up after that because people didn't like this one. You know, some lefties thought, well, that's a bit rubbish, really, isn't it? Because the subsequent dispersal is not 400 people cut down by sabers. Okay, so got this one here, right? St. Peter's Field, the Peterloo Massacre, getting somewhere now. On the 16th of August 1890, the people of Radio 60,000 pro democracy reformers, okay? I would point to this word pro democracy reformers. Right? <laughs> Men, women, and children was attacked by armed cavalry, resulting in 15 deaths and 600 injuries. 600 injuries, they say. <laughs> okay, so we, there's a bit of a change going here. This was, I'll give you the dates of the two plaques. Um, this was earlier than 2007, this happened in 2007. But notice these words pro democracy reformers, men, women, and children victims. Victim. Pro democracy. Okay. Now, the question is, is that what plaque should we actually put up? Because I might put a plaque on the end there which might say something like this. St. Peter's Field, the, P the Peterloo Massacre, right? On the 16th of August, 1819, a rally of 60,000 potential insurrectionists <laughs> who had been drilling for several months prior to that in the event of the need to overthrow the government and institute enfranchisement by force, uh, was attacked by armed cavalry. Uh, resistance carried on the rest of the day after the massacre. There were significant riots after that period. And in the following weeks, sections of the working class met and argued incessantly about the need to start the insurrection now because they'd hit us first. And that's evidence for that. Many of these meetings that happened after Peterloo and after the rioting, because that's not talked about at all here, resistance that actually went on, many of the meetings that went on after that were talking about, you know, basically people felt they'd done all this drilling for a long time and now was the time to strike because they'd struck first. And very, very interestingly, if you look into the history of this, the, I think it's the mayor, the person who actually launched the, the, the attack on this demonstration, clearly says that they, well, they were very frightened about all this drilling. It reminds me very much of what was going on in 1994 in Chappers, where people knew something was going on, they weren't quite sure what it was. But they certainly got in first and trapped, they smashed them first. It was a ruling class attack on what they regarded as a major threat to their position of power at that point. Yeah, that's a very different narrative to what these other things are saying. Right, move on. That's right. <laughs> Ray, Bristol. Okay. I'm now going to counterpose Peterloo and the narrative of Peterloo, or the various narratives of Peterloo, looking at the Bristol Riot of 1831. Uh, so I'm not going into much detail, but uh, again, you've got a lot of, I think, dragoons in this case, cutting people down. Um, this is a painting showing the centre of Bristol after it's been uh, pretty much um, raised by the crowd that formed in 1831. Now, why, why brought Bristol Riot up? Bristol Riot is basically characterised by the following things, right? It happens because the Reform Act to enfranchise people is defeated in 1831, okay? It's, they put forward an act to try and enfranchise 20% of the population, at the stage it was only 5%. Mainly the middle class men, the traders, the class of people, property owners. Uh, that act is defeated in Parliament. People, uh, the Speaker of the House, the House of Parliament, the House of Lords comes to Bristol to celebrate 
the fact that there is no reform. He meets the bishop, he meets the leaders of the corporation of Bristol, they're having a big, they're going to have a big banquet to celebrate no democracy. Right? Unfortunately for them, a crowd, people turn up, some of whom are radicals, some of whom are political reformers, some of whom it is unclear why they are exactly there, but they turn up. And a riot breaks out. And the speaker is chased over the roofs. They, this square, Queen Square, is kind of the centre of kind of uh, local class power in the city. It's like a George's with beautiful, um, and it is completely raised by the crowd. Uh, and there are three days of rioting. And I'll, I'll come on to the uh, the targets of that rioting in a minute. But anyway, this this riot is is really characterised by the following things. Most people don't know about it. It was very important at the time. Uh, it's probably the biggest riot that happened in Britain in that period. And it's generally characterised as a kind of either a completely disorganised, drunken orgy of violence, burning and debauchery, uh, ending up in a massacre to save everybody from this horrible crowd. It's not. Or alternatively, it is sometimes by, understood by certain sections of the left as a reform act of riot. I think people turned up to go angry. This Bristol mob of working class people turned up very angry because um, they not got reform and they had a riot and you know it failed because it was disorganised. So they're the basics or narratives. The first narrative of disorganisation, chaos, burning and fire is the usual one. Um, I'm just going to um, flick onto the next picture of the next bit and the next bit. Okay, it's a painting. Of, of done by an artist called Muller, I think, who was a famous watercolour artist, who bravely <laughs> went out that night and kind of sketched what was going on and looking at the crowd and, you know, it's a lot of very interesting images. He a beautiful painting of looking over from South Bristol, a mainly working class area, over the rest of the city. This was shown to us in, uh, in the Bristol Museum when we were doing some research in 1831. We were looking at and the curator of the museum, the art curator, said, I was in the museum, she said, oh my God, it was chaos. She said, it's like, look at it, I mean, the rich, she said, most of the wealthy people went off the bath, you know, to try and hide because they were so frightened. The whole city was going to burn, you know. It was chaos, there were drunken people around setting fire. I mean, the whole city was burning, it was burning, it was terrible. And we stood there and said, hang on a minute. I said, this looks like Baghdad to me. Right? in the invasion of Baghdad. Right? And the reason is, I said, well, what's that, what's that fire there then? And she said, oh, that's, that's the bishop's palace burning. She said, they almost burned the cathedral down, which you can see here, but they managed to stop them by barring the gates. I said, oh yeah. So I said, uh, what's that there? And she said, oh, that's Queen Square burning. It was the center of wealthy power, the mansion house, and all that kind of financial institutions. I said, what's that? And she said, that's the big jail, the new jail. It's a huge jail built for prisoners, right? I said, what's that? It's a toll house burning as well. I said, these are precision strikes, right? This is precision strikes going on here. No question in my mind. A crowd traversed the city, destroying symbols that they hated. Okay? And what they destroyed was prisons. They did three or four prisons, released all the prisoners. They did, this, they did the financial institutions, they did the clergy, burned the Bishop's Palace down, and they destroyed all them. And they also destroyed all of the wealthy area in the centre of Bristol quite systematically, looted it, had a big party as well. So this is not chaos. This is definitely not chaos in my mind. Chaos. I said, well, what happened in South Bristol where they all lived? And she said, oh, nothing happened there. Okay? Nothing at all. See this bridge, you know, you don't accept Well, it's fine. That's really strange, isn't it? Why didn't they burn down South Bristol as well? She said, oh, well, you know, I don't know. She said, I suppose it's about your definition of chaos. <laughs> so this is interesting to me. Now, this does not feature, this right does not feature in any real sense until very recently as a part of radical history. And I, I think you know, I, I could go on to talk about things like agendas, mobs, crowds, very much can, uh, on the basis of what Peter wrote about the Gordon riots, but... We'll, we'll just leave it now and go on to the next thing. Right, the Toll Puddle Bars. This is a museum for the Toll Puddle Bars. So the trade union movement threw up a museum to celebrate the, these heroes of the trade union movement. And um, I was unfortunate enough, <laughs> fortunate enough to do part of this talk in front of the museum, a trade union festival which happens every year in Toll Puddle. 
and I was a little bit embarrassed actually because I was going to be a bit critical of it. So I stood right in front of me doing this talk. So if you put the next slide up. 